Hello, welcome to this video. Hoping this to be a short uh, video, very quick little primer on blades for the scroll saw. I have another video that's got this in it, but I'm going to try to uh, boil this down to some real basics and give some a quick idea of what blades you can use and what are available and what you would want to use. So basically your standard blade, this is kind of a representation of that. Uh, you got teeth in a regular pattern. Then you have a skip tooth where it's every other tooth. I usually use skip tooth blades. And then you have one that has the bottom part has blades pointing the opposite, pointing upwards instead of downwards. And that's so you get a cleaner cut on the bottom on the upstroke. And uh, there are some that I, that I use that have every third tooth is reverse. But the two main categories of blades or how they fit in the saw. That's like a, a pinned in blade and these are plain in. Now here's here's a real life, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little pin in the end of the blade. That's that's a number 12 pin end blade and a plain end blade has just, just got a little tab there that you fit into your, uh, your blade holder. And on my saw, uh, this is a spare blade holder that I have. Uh, it will use both blades. In this case, the, the pinion blade, you just set it in there and put it in top and bottom and tension the blade and you're ready to go. Now on a plain end, you have to stick it in there top and bottom and screw this little set screw in. And that's what this little tool does. And it screws that in and holds your blade for you. So if you don't have a scroll saw, the one one thing I would recommend when you buy one is to make sure it doesn't need a tool to secure the blade. A lot of them now, you don't need a tool and that's that's ideal, that's what you want. Uh, I can get by without a tool with a pin blade, but I can't with a plain end and plain end is what I use 99.9% .9 of the time. And I'll show you why that is. You have a pattern like this, you see I've drilled a little hole right there. Well even with a smaller pin end blade, it's not going to go through that hole. Whereas you've got a plane in, it goes right in. And when you get doing small cuts like that, the, you don't have many options but to use a plane in blade. The only time I use a pin in is usually on thick wood on an external cut. And I, I keep a few. That's real good to cut a, a, a large external cut. Now I usually use a skip tooth. That's just one I picked up. But that's the two basic types as far as uh, major differences in the blade is the end of the, of the blade, either pin or plain. Now they come in very different, several different varieties. Like I said, you got these different versions of, uh, of teeth configuration, but they come in different sizes. And the sizes run from 2-0, and then it goes from there to 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 12. 12 is the largest blade, and uh, this one's probably a a seven there, and then you have a spiral blade, which I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's like it's twisted. It's got teeth looking in all directions. The, I don't like using those. You got to be really precise when you're cutting because they'll cut any direction you move. Uh, but they do have some applications. I use one occasionally. Uh, and as far as the sizes, the higher the number, the thicker the blade, and that's when I say thick. Uh, this the thickness this way. And the width of the blade is this way. And the higher the number, the larger those two numbers are. And they're, they're not really large, as you can see. These are, are very small and very thin. And uh, this that's not a real small one. They get much smaller than that. But uh, not only those numbers larger, the number of teeth per inch go down as the numbers go up, as, as the size numbers go up. So like a 12 has fewer teeth per inch than say a five or, or a seven. So that's just something to remember. I'm gonna have a link to a chart in the description to show you, or to give you some uh, ideas on uh, what blade to use with what thickness of wood. It's not ideal, but it gives you something to start from. I, I've done most of mine just from experience. I just have a feel for what I need. And I normally use a number five. I use that 90% of the time or more. I use a three quite often. I would probably use a three on this. 
You could use a five, but I'd probably use a three, maybe even a one. But that's something that you learn from experience. The thickness of the wood, this is a plywood, that makes a difference too. The hardness of the wood will all make a difference. And in my experience, the blade will break occasionally. And usually for me, they break up in this holder here. So what you got to watch if you're doing a lot of small cuts like this, it's real easy to get that in there crooked and, and it'll start working it right there and that's where it'll bend and break. Uh, also, I, you see the little holes on the bottom. I feed my blades from the bottom and it's easy to catch them and crimp them. And then that gives it a place to break because you're trying to pull it through if you crimp that blade. So once you crimp one, might as well go ahead and change it to start you a new blade. Uh, also, if you're cutting really fast, you know, I'm talking about the speed of the saw up and down. If you're cutting at a high speed, especially a thicker wood, the blade will get really hot. I've even had them turn colors on me. And they will stretch. And the uh, first time it happened to me, I was trying to tighten the blade. It just wouldn't tighten. No matter what I did, it wouldn't tighten. I didn't know what was wrong. Uh, I finally changed blades. The next one worked fine. Just, they will stretch. And they'll usually stretch somewhere up in here. Uh, and that gives them a place to break. But anyway, check out that chart that I have a link to. And that's just real simple basics. And also you need to know, if you've never done it before, the, the blade always goes down when you mount it on the saw. And all standard blades now on scroll saw are five inches. So I don't know if you can even buy another size blade, but there's a standard now at five inches. And so I hope that this is helpful to you. And if there's any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.